and start us off. What have you uh, kind of figured out about this group since they came back from Christmas and to the scrimmages? Do you feel like you have a good idea of where the parts fit yet or still figuring that out? I don't know. I, you know, every time this time of year you feel like, I don't know if we're any good or not. You know, it's just because it's pitchers versus hitters. And does that mean our pitching's, you know, superior? Does that mean we're not going to swing the bat? So it's this that, I guess, that conundrum of where are we? And there's only one way to find out, and that's to go play somebody else that has a different color jersey. So I, I love our talent on the field. Um, you know, the, the, where that fits until we start getting into, you know, the flow of a lineup, I, I think I can probably um, – Say, feel confident saying I, I like where the bottom of our order, you know, fits. What that order is going to look like at the top, um, one through five, um, is probably a little bit yet to be determined. But some guys are heating up. Troyer's got three home runs in the preseason. Uh, John Simmons gets on base a ton. So there's some things that are emerging as um, I think trends and guys trending in the right direction offensively. So, yes, to answer your question, there are some things I'm starting to figure out, but I don't think I have the puzzle solved yet until we, until we play somebody else for maybe a week or two. Well, you got bets in that leadoff spot, though, right? Oh, yeah. So, you're talking about one through five, so yes. it's, really, it's two through five. Correct. Right? Yeah. I, I haven't lost my mind. In <laughs> no, we, and we've talked about you know, just some different scenarios as a coaching staff um, between myself and Cordell and, and Coach Cannon and you know, just some, some different offensive thought processes that go in there. Uh, Want to have some speed at the top? Do you sacrifice some speed for some on base ability? Does speed really value like it does if you don't get on base? So there's just, you know, we, we're going to have some speed at the bottom of our order. I can tell you that. Is that ideal? No. Um, but hopefully, you know, that gives us a chance to use use it. Just have some weapons down there if those guys can do some things that we ask them to do and keep it pretty simple. What was it like navigating this past off season with the transfer portal and everything, plus having to replenish? so much that you lost through graduation guys going to the pro and such I think you know it never comforting you know you're like man we lost some really good players but I think every program kind of cycles through that you know you're going to have players come and go and sometimes they go in mass and they're really good and and that's what you know we're we're what we went through um I really love the character of our kids that we've the, the one thing I'm so proud of is just how our locker room has just kind of passed it down to the next group. And a lot of that is Jalen and Gray and, and Cole Garrett and David Erickson. They're the mainstays for when we finally turn the corner. And so a lot of the credit goes to them. But I really think the process of that, you know, I'll take a less talented player, but I don't want to sacrifice on what we've got in that locker room and the character of the kids. So that's what I'm most proud of. We, we've got talent. How, how it all fits together is really, you know, that's going to be the challenge. I think we've got more depth. I think it gives us a chance to use some bench. Um, it's not enough right-handed on the bench. It's a lot of left-handed. You know how I am with lefties. Um, so we'll, we'll figure that part out. But um, it, it's just it, it, it bodes well for us despite the winning and the losing, the ebbs and flows of the season. I think the character that we've been able to grab from the portal and add the high school mix, we're going to overcome some things simply because of that. Last year, you guys really started the season off with a bang, you know, getting two out of three at, at UF, a top 10 team at the time. Uh, and this year, you're going up against a Southern Miss team, another top 25 team. Uh, about a week out, are you excited about that challenge? Are you nervous about it? Or is it a good uh, series to kind of, you know, test your team right out of the gate? Yeah, I think, I mean, I'm excited. I, I just, I get excited when, I mean, first of all, it's Tanner Hall on opening day, and he's one of the probably top, arguably, five or six pitch, starting pitchers in the country, uh, Team USA guy. Um, so here we go right out of the gate, similar to last year with Hunter Barco from Florida. So um, I, I just I don't know any different. I don't think that really gives your team a very sense, uh, very good sense of of um, of anything when you play an opponent um, who just isn't isn't as good as what we're used to playing in a non-conference slate. So I think we have to do that. I think the kids are going to be excited for it. It's Southern Miss. It's going to be rowdy. It's sold out. I think already for all three games. So. That'll be fun, and, and it really gives our kids a chance to. I mean, there's gonna there's something at stake right out of the gate, and that's kind of how I like it. So I'm excited for it. Uh, I've known Scott for a long time. He was uh, an assistant at Southern Miss in '09 when I was an assistant at North Carolina in '09, and we ended up both in Omaha. They had Dozier. They had some really good players on that team. So um, just some really good memories. And anytime you get to coach against somebody like that, that you really respect. I get excited about that too. Pitching-wise, you pride yourself on pitching, and we know about Garrett Horn. Like, 
what has he done in terms of his development and getting himself to be a frontline guy like you have, you've had with Joe Adams and guys in the past? Who else do you see or who do you have projected for like a weekend rotation, midweek role? Yeah, well, I'll start by saying this. I don't, I don't think we've had a pitcher here as focused and as driven as Garrett Corey is. There's just no, nothing gets left out. Um, it, he's an easy player to coach. He's fun to watch. He's, he's the guy that you want on Friday night because he earns you know, his opportunities. And I think he kind of creates a lot of his own luck by the way he goes about his business. So that's the one thing I think that continues to mature with Garrett. I think probably the coolest thing is he's learned to control his effort level in between outings. Um, which was what probably got him in a little bit of trouble towards the end of the year last year. So he's healthy. He looks great. He's been 92, 94. I think the windshield was in the 20s the other day. Could feel his fingers, and there's still some 94s on that scoreboard. So that's good for the Flames. Um, outside of him, we've got some guys that I really like. Uh, Nick Moran has really taken some steps forward for us. Um, it's three pitches. It's a lot of strikes. He's been up to 93. Uh, Mikey Tepper's an elite arm talent for, for us um, coming from Mississippi State. Uh, we saw him up to 96 in the fall. Uh, the stuff is, is ridiculously good, um, and Mikey's continuing to get better. Um, those three guys will be in our weekend rotation. Um, I feel like at this point, uh, Garrett Ganey's got a chance to be in there, fastball changeup, and Trey Cooper has done some things for us, uh, more fastball slider. They're both left-handed, which is good. Um, outside of that, Cole Hertzler's um, done some things for us in a starting role midweek, uh, or excuse me, during these scrimmages that might have him in the mix midweek. I don't know. We'll just see how it kind of depends on the guys around him. We all know what uh, Jalen was able to do prior to his injury. How is he uh, doing now? Is he getting close to back to his pre-injury form? Yes, I would say he's 100% back to where he was. Uh, no throwing limitations. I think the biggest thing for Jalen was anytime you get in the batter's box facing live pitching and you haven't done it for a year, Mm -hmm. um, that always has a little bit of a, of a curve there. And so, but he's older and he's handled that pretty well. Um, you know, his contact has been fine in, in scrimmages. So I'm, he's the least of my worries. Yeah. How's the rest of your outfield looking? Obviously losing Aaron and, uh, and Orndorff. Yeah, well, I mean, Troyer's going to play. Uh, transfer from Clemson, he's got three home runs in the preseason. Uh, wonderful kid, just plays hard, um, shows up every day and gets after it. He's earned the opportunity for us out there. Uh, you still got three Hillier, Victor Castillo, and and Will Stewart out there. Um, that you know, I, I could see some matchup stuff going on there. Three's going to be in the lineup, whether it's a DH or left field, um, and that'll just kind of depend on what we want to do. Uh, I, I'm not ever going to pinch hit for three Hillier, so you, you probably don't want to DH that guy. Um, you want to have him out there somewhere, so he's going to catch some force, play left. You know, if we needed to DH him, we would. So. I got a lot to think through there, and, and you know, there's going to be some guys that are disappointed, but there's also you know, going to be some opportunity for those guys off the bench that are valuable at bats for us if they're not the lineup. Did you see this lineup being different the first weekend to the second weekend to the third? I do. Yeah. I do. Yeah. I mean, it's just, there's just so many guys I haven't seen in a moment where I know what I'm going to, I mean, and even Foster, you know, he, he came on strong at the end of the year last year, but it's just one year, it's that freshman year. There's video, tons of it out there on you now. You guys start to figure you out a little bit. So, you know, it, it's, yeah, I mean, it's going to be, I think, just kind of a constant flow to, okay, is somebody hot? Is there some matchup we like depending on the opponent? What's their rotation like? You know, what is their bullpen like? Is there somebody I want off the bench? You know, in some moments where they've got a, a reliever that I think we can match up with, you know, in certain spots that, you know, has really been hot for them. There, there's just so many different scenarios. Matt and I went over it. We're just going to have to be really, really good, more so than ever, with our preparation with our opponent, um, from the pitching side of it and the offensive side of it. I'm never going to sacrifice the defense, um, but I think from the pitching side of it, we're going to have to use multiple guys, get them in there, get them out of there, keep them available, and match up really, really well. And we're going to have to, I mean, synergy is going to be our, probably our best friend this year. That infield's crowded in a good way and yep. I mean when you look at Foster at third but then you got Simmons I've seen him taking balls over there and then you know Lazaro Wheatley the new kid yep. Keeter I mean how have you kind of figured how all that's going to look on opening day yet I don't and not, Jenner at first I mean. yeah no, and, and, and Jenner I mean Jenner's like a left-handed shortstop I mean he's he's not as big as Logan Matthews so he doesn't quite have the reach in the yeah. length but everything else is just as good if not a little bit better you know than Logan just from the glove to the hand and having his feet work around the bag. So we're not going to miss a beat with him at first base. Okay. Um, 
I, I, I like the experience of Nathan Keeter at second. He, 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 he's, he lowers my heart rate, um, you know, during a game more so than he did as a freshman. Um, and I think, I think for us, the biggest piece on that infield is the maturity of Jake Lazar. Um, you know, and, and what we've seen from the fall into the preseason and him to be able to slow down a little bit and just play this game at his own pace and just kind of take what the game gives him, that wasn't in the cards for him last year. And so tough conversation at the end of the year, really threw the ball in his court. Coach, I, I'm committed to Liberty. I want to be here. I want to see this thing through. I'm going to come back here and prove you wrong. And I like those players, especially when they're from Long Island. <laughs> Speaking of last year, um, a month in, you moved three to left. Yep. Steven goes in short for Jay. Yep. Keeter comes in second. Of those four or five scenarios that all happened to different people, was there one, what was the one thing that you can share? What was it most important, who was it most important for those changes, moving camp to third? Because it all kind of happened kind of at the same time. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think I think the, the most important thing, the most important move we made was to get three in the lineup every single day um, and put him in left field because you saw what he did. He was clutch for us, and he hit the middle of the order, and he really did some nice things for us there. On the infield, we knew long-term Cam Foster was a third baseman. Yeah. And so I think for the future of our program and for Cam's benefit, like, hey, why, why don't we just go ahead and do this now? And get him over there. We're going to live with some throws in the dirt, which right. I think all of you saw, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and so there were some growing pains there with a six-four freshman that, you know, that some days were confident more so than others. But um, I would say that one just for the stability. And, and, and he's a draft eligible sophomore. We might only have him just for this year. And if that turns out to be the case, I think that was probably on the dirt the best yeah. move we made, you know, for, yeah. for, for our program. You mentioned Cam and some of the throws. Mechanically, what are some of the things that he's done to become more comfortable? With that? Well, there's some mobility that he's worked on. Okay. So for him, just through the hips and just, just he just wasn't very mobile. And so in order to deliver some balls, he had to be very upright. And when you get upright and you get over the top of that slot, you know the, he's going to spray some balls up and down. And he did that last year. And now I think there's some more, well, I know there's some more mobility in those hips. And he's able to stay in a better arm slot. And he's a lot more accurate with what he's done, you know, um, over the last two or three weeks coming out of the preseason. Uh, very pleased with where he is throwing wise. Back into your pitching staff, uh, middle to late innings, where are those guys looking right now? It's going to be veteran over stuff. Um, you know, I think in the past you've seen us had some pretty good stuff yeah. out of that bullpen. Trey Carter's got to be in the mix for us. David Erickson, you know, Cole Garrett, some of those older players, Tyler Germanowski. Um, you know, I think early at the beginning of the year, I've always been, you know what, if we're going to have those opportunities, we're going to give those opportunities to our veterans um, and let them just kind of calm everybody down. And if I get beat or we get beat with our veteran players, I can lay my head down at night. That being said, there are some younger players that are going to fight their way in there, I think, just by their competitiveness and their stuff. Um, they're going to have some, some growing pains along the way. but. I think it's that's that's what I'm like. It's up to us as a pitching staff or as a coaching staff, especially me as the head coach, is to just try to get these guys in spots where it just continues to, to I think allow them to grow, and then the 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 role magnifies itself a little bit towards the end of the year. I think we've been good at that as a coaching staff, is allowing guys to just kind of get their feet wet and not just dumping them in the fire. I mean, Garrett Horn's a good example. We knew what we had, right. but we didn't want to just make him a starter right out of the gate at Florida, his first outing. You know, we did that to Trey Gibson, and I think we saw how that went. And so I'm just always cautious of taking care of our players health-wise, but certainly giving them the confidence that they need as they go through the season. What's your, what's Brylan Green's role on this team this year? Yeah, so Brylan, um, first of all, wonderful kid and, and just a joy to be around. He's, he's battled some injuries, so it's been hard for him he hasn't been able to get the batter's box for us at all during the preseason, so um, I, I don't know. It's just tough. Um, I, I just I don't know where he fits for us right now. Um, tough situation for him. He's disappointed because he's, he loves baseball. Um, but you know, uh, Team Scott, that we're not going to talk about first inning through ninth, but you can't imagine him not being in your clubhouse. Mm, gosh, <laughs> that's a really really good question. Um, probably Ryan Shea. Um, just an unbelievably a kid that is as mature in his faith and as 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 Christ-centered and 
concerned about other people's faith and, and their eternity. I've never been around one that has, I mean, a kid's written two books about his faith, and, and I mean, it's just incredible. And so when you, when you have that kind of kid in your clubhouse, I mean, look, he hasn't played much for us, but he's, he's the MVP. I mean, he's, he's special. Yeah. Who at the rules committee allowing the volunteer system to be paid? Is that official now? No, sir. That's it, July 1. Okay. July 1. Yeah. So essentially, basically, you know, our volunteer assistant is a little bit different, and this is liberty for you being just better than everybody else. Sure. But Andrew is, is technically hired under the grounds department. Um, so he takes care of our mounds and all that, and he volunteers for the athletic department. Yeah. So he has full benefits mm -hmm. and gets a salary from the school. There's only one other school in the country that does that that I'm aware of, and that's Coastal. And they did it before us. So we probably, I probably have Gary to thank for that. But, um, so it's really simple for him. It just, the, the, the salary just flips to the athletic department now right. instead of being on grounds. The tough part for a lot of these schools is that their volunteer is paid through camps. So if the volunteer's paid through camps, which is a private LLC underneath the head coach's name, um, now the school starts paying him who's gonna run the camps. There's a lot of balls in the air right. here. And to Ian and, and Todd's credit, they haven't come out and said, this is exactly how we're going to fund it, at which level, you know, and, and so they're going to wait and see what the landscape across the country. I mean, Ian's just really good at that. He knows what he's doing. Go back to Foster for a second. Yeah. Just when you're trying to balance that, because like you said, pro professionally he profiles the third baseman, yeah. and that's in his best interest. You're trying to do what's in the best interest of the team too, and if he's over there and he's struggling to make throws and all that kind of how much are you weighing one of those against the other? It's like, man, I want to do what's best for this kid in his long term, but also I've got to do what's best for this team. And how, how do you how do you manage those things? Yeah, I mean, I, I think you know, I think you allow him to get. If we were to move him to first base, um, he has taken some reps at first base mm -hmm. in the preseason, just because I like John Simmons. I think John Simmons is going to get a, a lot of valuable playing time for us this year. If we ran into a scenario where I felt like defensively Cam's throwing was an, an issue for us, then we could just move him to first and put Simmons in there at third. I don't think we'd miss a beat. Um, but yes, I, I feel like we have a responsibility as a coaching staff, and we talk about it in the recruiting process, is, hey, we only hope you're here for two years because we want to develop you enough to give you that opportunity to sign a professional contract. That decision is between you and your family. But yeah, I, 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 that weighs on me as a coach. Like I want these kids to have that opportunity because that's part of why I think they came here is because we win, number one. But number two, I want to play for coaches that develop me and give me that, that chance at, at the next level. So, um, yeah, I mean, we've got to do that. But at the same time, the program is, is bigger than any, each you know, individual player on this team. So I've got to value that. But there's, there's a way to be able to get these kids the exposure to scouts in the preseason or during batting practice where they're getting reps at different positions, you know, just to be able to say, hey, this kid can do some things at this position. I've seen it. I went through that with Ackley at North Carolina. We, he played first base for us, but during batting practice, we put him in center field and let him shag, shag fly balls because that's what the scouts wanted to see. And sure enough, mm -hmm. Seattle drafts him and they make him a second baseman. So. <laughs> <laughs> You've been, for years, you were advocating for like a third paid assistant coach. Yep. How big was that to see that? And were you hoping to maybe get a fourth on there? We were hoping to get a fourth. Uh, I know Dot was too. Um, Baseball kind of started that proposal, and softball jumped in right behind us. Um, it would help tremendously. Look, I, I mean, I, I, I don't want to say anything. I don't want to throw the NCAA under the bus, but I mean, it, it just the student athlete welfare part of coach to player ratios here. I mean, we have 35 players on our roster, and we have four coaches. I mean, basketball. No offense, they they deserve it, but but they just got two more. I mean, what are we doing here? You see bowl game pictures and there's more people in pullovers than there are in jerseys. I mean, and so I, I, don't, I don't know, it's never made sense to me, but I'm not one to complain. I'd rather find a solution than, than sit here and gripe about something that I don't have a solution to. Um, so it is what it is. Um, and until we can get momentum for the fourth, I mean, it took us, what, maybe six years to get the third? So I don't know, maybe by the time I'm done coaching, we'll have a fourth. <laughs> Is that the same for the scholarship counter as well? Want to see more come to the baseball way? Yeah, I, I, I can understand that a little bit from um, from a, a, an administrative standpoint. And 
if you're if you're asking me as an AD to add another coaching position that I have to fund, and then oh by the way we've got to come up with more scholarship money, um, that can happen here at Liberty. But let's just be honest, there's not many programs and athletic departments that have that kind of resources. So you're not going to get both of those probably anytime soon. There definitely has to be a plan and some foresight with these ADs. So I get that part of it. I just think student athlete welfare and having enough coaches. Um, and, and not to mention coach welfare with being on the road recruiting and being away from your family. I've done that. I did it for 17 years as an assistant. It's tough. And so I think there's just so many good reasons to have the fifth one, but um, we'll just keep being patient. Yeah. Great bets. Um, hmm. what, what's left for him outside of the Super Regional and the trip to Omaha? And him in his final year, uh, what are some things that he's individually trying to improve on that maybe – we haven't seen yet. Older player who's more concerned about his teammates yeah. than he is himself. I mean, I, he'll, he'll be in that category with Locklear and McDyer and just those guys that I just dread it, man. You know, the day that we can't run him out there. I mean, he's he's grown here spiritually more, most importantly. I think he would be the first one to tell you that. I think he got out of his own way, um, you know, just as far as making baseball um, way too important. Um, and He's been very outspoken with me in our in our meetings one on one about hey I'm I'm more concerned about things that I never thought I'd, I'd be concerned about when I first got here and so you just watch these kids grow man and um, I mean it, it, look I, I don't know where we're going to end up this season but I, I know this much like w when you're done at the end of the day and this season's over with the kids in that locker room are going to be like man there's going to be tears because they're not going to have a chance to be around you know Jalen Guy or Gray Betts or Cole Garrett I mean. Everybody thinks it's because we have good players. I'm telling you, man, this we won because we have these kids that that I don't know that I deserve to coach. You know, then and Grace at the top of the list. I mean, he's just special. Yep. You figured out a spot for Todd Hudson yet? A two-way guy. I mean, saw him hitting the other the other day, but I mean, he's definitely going to play. He's definitely going to get some reps at five o'clock. I know that much because it makes me feel good to see the ball go way over the net uh, yeah. or into the net. You know, I mean, I have to be careful with him as, as far as, you know, being an, an everyday outfielder. He throws a ton of strikes now um, to be that size. Uh, it's a lot of strikes. It's up to 92. It's a change up and a slider. Mm -hmm. um, so you know what you're getting on the mound. Um, his contact has gone way through the roof in the preseason as opposed to the fall. So he's trending in the right direction on both sides of the ball. I don't know that I have my finger on exactly what is going to be his role this year because there's just so much to like. I mean, good grief, he made a 4.0 in the first semester in college and he can hit it, you know, as far as anybody on our team. The exit velos on his bat are, are higher on average than anybody in our program. So, um, and he throws a ton of strikes and he's up to 92. I mean, there's, there's a lot there. Um, but another one, I want to be very intentional about not putting him in a situation where he fails too soon and now we've got confidence to coach more than we do the ability and so I just want to make sure we get him in the right spots and we continue to allow him to grow like he needs to because he's got a bright bright future here. Could he be one of those left-handed bats that you want off the bench maybe or? I think so I think um, you know Dylan Edmonds would be in the mix there mm -hmm. um, we saw it in the fall he pretty much um, I think it was left on left hit that double against Virginia Tech uh, off the bench. Um, Braden Horton, freshman, uh, his, his, are, his at bats are really, really good. He's, as Jim Toman used to say, he looks hitterish in the, in the, in the batter's box. So um, I, I like Horton, I like Hudson. I mean, they all, you know, Hertzler's our right-handed power guy that if he can get to that power in games, we desperately need that right-handed bat. Um, so, I mean, there's just a lot there, but you know, again, I haven't seen it in 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 against a different color uniform enough to say this is what we're going to be and, and what we've got, and you know it'll just be kind of constantly evolving. I guess is the best way to sum it up. Ian said in an interview here in the pitching lab. Yeah, I'm excited for you for that. Where where's it going to go? <laughs> yeah, no, great question. Glad to talk about it. We're in the initial stages of talking to architects and engineers. They've been over here uh, um, on one occasion, and then we've had two different Zoom calls about it. And basically where you see the playground now and those red picnic tables, um, that would kind of be knocked out and the cages would go perpendicular to our concourse all the way up to 
the playing surface and the left field wall so that you could access the cages from the playing surface. That would be a batting area, which would have a lot more height than what ours has now. There'd be skylights to where there's natural light in there where you don't even have to turn on the lights some days to hit. And then our current indoor batting situation right now would be flipped into a pitching only development area where, I mean, Matt needs that. I mean, for us to continue to, I mean, I think we get players here. I know we get players here because of our pitching development and our player development. And so how can we take that to the next level? The best thing that happened to me was Ian and Mickey getting on the plane and going to Arkansas and touring their baseball facilities while we were playing football down there. Mm -hmm. So they got to see what is arguably the best in the country. And so we're trying to do our version of what that looks like player development wise. I know Ian has some premium seating in mind too as we dig into that hill there um, to do some loge seating, um, box seating there. Um, so we've got some ideas um, what the price tag and the look of that is. We'll wait to hear back from the architects and we'll go from there. Is there any kind of a, I mean, you're obviously in the very early stages, but do you think like that's a 25 thing or like year wise or I mean, a couple years down the road probably? Ian McCall don't play around, so I, I, mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it doesn't get started. You know, if, if it's something that we can get the funding in line for and start yeah. this summer, I think he would do it. Um, you know, I think we need to keep winning too. I think that helps. <laughs>